It's nearly impossible to come across someone who hasn't heard of Charles Manson or his family. But if somehow you haven't heard of him or them, or you just want to refresh your course, here are the basic facts about the Manson family. The number one thing that people generally remember about the Manson family is that they brutally murdered the pregnant actress Sharon Tate. But before the murders happened, Manson spent more than half his life in prison. Manson was arrested for the first time when he was only 12 years old. He was sent to reform school for a short amount of time. But at the age of 13, he was arrested for armed robbery. Afterwards, Manson would be in and out of prison for crimes ranging from car theft to robbery. His longest stint would be 10 years at Washington State Prison for pimping and passing stolen checks, when he would eventually be released, and then he would head to San Francisco, California, where the family would be created. Manson preached about an impending race war. Family members would later state that Manson held nightly sermons that would be given while members were under the influence of LSD, but Manson would either take a smaller dosage than the others, or not at all. At first, Manson's sermons start out with speaking about how Jesus didn't judge people, even evil people, which Manson told followers that he himself was possessed by an evil spirit. Then the sermons became darker, where Manson preached there would be an apocalyptic race war that he called Helter Skelter, named after one of his favorite songs by the Beatles. The family lived at two different ranches. The most well-known of the two ranches was the Spawn Movie Ranch, which had served as a backdrop for TV shows such as Bonanza and The Lone Ranger. The family came here around mid-1967 and would be staying here when the murders were carried out in the summer of 1969. But on August 16, 1969, police would raid the ranch after a tip-off that the people living there had been stealing cars. Manson and 25 others were arrested. A few days later, everyone was released from jail due to a mess up on the arrest warrant, which made Manson lead the family members to the Barker Ranch in Death Valley. This was also the ranch that Manson told his followers that they would be able to survive Helter Skelter at. The family murdered nine victims during the summer of 1969. On July 31st, 1969, fellow family member Bobby Boussoulet came into some trouble when he needed money to settle a drug debt with a local biker gang. Boussoulet took family member Susan Atkins and Mary Brunner to a music teacher named Gary Hinman, who had been friends with the family. But when Hinman refused to hand over money, an altercation broke out that led to Manson showing up and telling Boussoulet to clean the mess up. Boussoulet ended up stabbing Hinman to death with two fatal stab wounds to the chest. Boussoulet then wrote Political Piggy on the wall with Hinman's blood, supposedly to make it look like the group the Black Panthers had done it. Three days after Hinman's murder, Boussoulet was arrested, which is believed to have been the reason Manson decided to order a copycat murder nearby Hinman's crime scene, so that Boussoulet would be found innocent and released from jail. On August 8, 1969, Manson sent family members Patricia Krenwinkel, Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, and Linda Kasabian to a house on Celio Drive and told them to kill everyone that was there. The first person to die that night would be 18-year-old Stephen Parent, a young man who had just been visiting a friend at the Celio Drive residence. Parent was shot three times, two of which were fatal wounds to the chest. The four family members would then go inside the residence where they would terrorize and murder four people. 25-year-old Abigail Folger, the hirest to the coffee company, was stabbed 28 times. 32-year-old Wojtek Fryowski, a Polish film director, was bludgeoned, shot twice, and stabbed more than 50 times. 35-year-old Jay Sebring, a celebrity hairstylist, was shot and stabbed seven times. 
26-year-old Sharon Tate, an eight-month pregnant actress, was stabbed 16 times, killing both her and her baby. Before leaving the residence, Atkins put the word pig on the front door with Tate's blood, connecting it to the crime scene of Hinman's murder. The very next night, Manson took family members Watson, Krenwinkel, and Leslie Van Houten to a residence in Los Feliz, which was only about an hour from the Tate crime scene. Manson reportedly told them to kill the couple that lived in the house. 44-year-old Leno LaBianca, a supermarket chain owner, was stabbed 12 times with the word war carved into his stomach. 40-year-old Rosemary LaBianca, Leno's wife, was stabbed 41 times. Before the family left, they smeared death to pigs on a wall and a misspelled helter-skelter on the refrigerator, again connecting all of the murders with Hinman's. On August 16th, police raided the Spawn Ranch on a tip-off over a vehicle theft ring that would result in Manson and 25 others being arrested. But they would all be released only days later. Manson believed that a stuntman named Donald Shea, who was living on the ranch with the family, tipped off the police about the stolen vehicles. So on August 26th, family member Steve Grogan killed Shea under Manson's orders. Shea was beheaded and buried near Spawn Ranch. The trial lasted seven months. While Atkins was being held in jail for another crime, she brags to a fellow cellmate about participating in the tape murders. The cellmate became the break in the case by going to authorities with the confession, resulting in the family's arrest. Linda Kasabian wouldn't stand trial for her participation in the murders after she agreed to take a deal to testify against the family members. Charles Manson would be found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder for all the victims. He was sentenced to death. Patricia Krenwinkel was convicted on all counts for the murders at the Tate residence in La Biancas. She was sentenced to death. Susan Atkins was convicted on all counts for the murders at the Tate residence. She was sentenced to death. Charles Tex Watson was convicted on all counts for the murders at the Tate residence in La Biancas. He was sentenced to death. Leslie Van Houten was convicted on all charges for the murder of the La Biancas. She was sentenced to death. Steve Grogan was convicted on all counts for the murder of Donald Shea, but due to his low intelligence, he was given a life sentence with the possibility of parole. Bruce Davis was convicted on all counts for the murders of Hinman and Shea. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. Bobby Boussoulet was found guilty on all counts for the murder of Gary Hinman. He was sentenced to death, but in 1972, the California Supreme Court ruled the death penalty unconstitutional, and all death sentences were overturned to life sentences. One Manson family member has been paroled. Although Grogan was convicted for the murder of Donald Shea without a body, a deal was made that stated if Grogan showed authorities where Shea's body was buried, he would be paroled. In 1985, Grogan took the deal and was paroled. On November 19, 2017, Charles Manson died from colon cancer in Corcoran Prison. He was 83 years old. In 2009, Susan Atkins died from brain cancer in Chachilla Prison. She was 61 years old. Manson never confirmed any of the murder theories. One of the main theories for the murders was that Manson was trying to accelerate his apocalyptic prophecy of a race war by placing the blame of the murders on the Black Panthers. 
The most popular theory is that Manson was trying to get family member Bobby Boussoulet out of prison after he murdered Gary Hinman by making the murders look like copycat murders. Another popular theory is that Manson sent members to the Celio Drive residence because a record producer named Terry Melcher had lived there, and Melcher had turned Manson down for a record contract the year before. And the theory that had been brought up in the trial was that Manson believed the Beatles were singing about his race war on their White Album and sending him hidden messages. Whether you believe any of the theories or not, you now know the basic facts about the Manson family. Thanks for watching.